Are you looking for an easy bow tutorial? If so, then this is the video for you. Hello everyone, I'm Caroline and today I've got 10 different bows to show you and they're all easy. Some a little more complex than the others, but you'll be able to do each and every one of these when you watch the tutorial. I'm going to timestamp where each bow is, so if you're trying to do a bow in particular, you can come back to the video and then you can go back to the timestamp that shows the bow that you want to make and keep playing that over and over to help you out. Now, it's near Christmas when I'm filming this, but I'm going to do bows for all through the year to give you an idea of the sort of things you can do for any season, any celebration. These two types of ribbon are very important to distinguish between. This is a ribbon that is just a ribbon. There's no wire in this at all, it's floppy. So if you're going to make a big loop on something, you can see no matter what you do with it, it's not really going to hold that shape. Now that's not a bad thing. It all depends what sort of bow you're going to be making. This ribbon, on the other hand, is a wired ribbon. Now if you look carefully, you can see little bits of wire there. Now this ribbon is completely different because if I wanted to do a big loop, Look at that, it stays nicely. And if it got squashed, it's not a problem. You just floof it out and it's back to what it was again. So there are two very important differences in ribbon. Well worth bearing in mind. Now, another important consideration when you're making bows is the width of the ribbon. It sounds silly, but hear me out. I've got this and this is two and a half inches wide. It's not wired but it's hessian, which means it's got a little bit of hold to the shape. So I can make that size loop, and that's about as far as you can push it without it being floppy. If you make a big loop with that, it will flop. But you can see if you're making a smaller loop, you really don't need that bit of wire. And then I've got this, which is a little piece of ribbon, really fine, probably about quarter of an inch. And I got this from inside a jumper where they put the little hanger things on. And they always drive me nuts because they pop out of the neck of your jumper or your sweater when you're wearing it. And you look very dishevelled, so I always cut them off. And not ribbon. These are just scraps of fabric. And we will be making a bow out of some scraps of fabric. So I'll throw those in there too, just to show you what's coming up. Right, let's get stuck in with the first and most simple bow. So the first thing to do is to show you a two loop bow, which I'm going to use this for first. So you make a loop, form another loop in the other hand and tie a knot using the loops, not the straight edges, the loops. You can then adjust it so that the loops are the size you want. And then you can cut your tails like that. And you've got yourself a really simple bow. There you are, that was easy. The rest are going to be that easy, just take a little bit more time. Right, let's get on with bow number two. For this bow, I'm going to use some wired ribbon. This is one and a half inches wide and it's got pattern on one side and the other side does have a bit of pattern, but it's obviously the second other side. But that doesn't matter, I'll show you how to make a bow that looks fabulous using this. So you want to hold this piece of ribbon in your hand and then put this bit where your thumb is halfway along so you're going to have one loop this way and then bring in your other loop on the other side. And then don't think, oh, I've done it wrong. Just fiddle about with it. Take your time. You can't get this wrong. You can just take longer to do it. And when you're happy with that, cut off the ribbon. Take yourself a pipe cleaner. Now scrunch this up like that in the middle. Make sure you're halfway. Sometimes you think you are and then when you look properly you're not. And then pop your pipe cleaner around like that and then pull and twist like that. And now you can either chop your pipe cleaners off and glue this into place, or you can attach it to something using the pipe cleaners. So if you're not quite sure, leave your pipe cleaner on for the moment and you can take it off later. Now, floof out your loops and you've got your loops and your tails. So I'm going to dovetail these. 
And there you've got yourself a looped bow using a pipe cleaner. Now, the pipe cleaner, you may think, well, I'm happy with that. Or you may decide you want to do something. So you've got a few choices. You can get an old piece of jewellery. I've got this brooch. And you can put that on there. And doesn't that change the look of this straight away? You can get a button that matches something in your ribbon. This matches the pair there. And you can glue that over the top of the pipe cleaner. You can put something like this butterfly embellishment on. Or you can put a little false flower on. Something like that. Now that is going to lead me very nicely into the next bow we make. It's a layered bow. For this layered bow, I'm going to use this beautiful pink two and a half inch ribbon, this two inch deco mesh ribbon, and our original inch and a half ribbon with little pears and birds on. You're going to make a repeat of this another twice. So this is going to have to be slightly bigger than this bow, otherwise you're not going to see it. So, and also, make sure your tails are longer, because the further you go back, the longer you want your tails. So the same sort of principle. Now, this isn't wired, but it's really stiff, so I don't think there'll be any problem with keeping the loops of the bow up the way they are. Get okay, yeah, the bow, put it on. Yep, that's just a little bit longer. Just what I want. Scrunch it up. Put a pipe cleaner on. You can use a zip tie for this. You can tie it with a little piece of string or ribbon, but that's very difficult. Cut it roughly to size and then make sure your bow is central. Mine very rarely are on a first attempt. And then make one more bow using this gorgeous pink wired ribbon. Be aware if you're using your dressmaking scissors, your best scissors, don't cut wired ribbon and don't cut pipe cleaners. This is one that is designed to cut this sort of thing, but it, I really wouldn't use my dressmaking scissors for it because it would dull the edge. So now I get my three bows, put them, biggest one on the bottom, next one there, and then the longest pipe cleaner that we didn't trim the ends off on top, and then pop it on. Bring the pipe cleaner around the back. Give it a bit of a twist. Check that everything is where you want it to be. And then floof your bow. Very important to floof your bow. It looks like three times as good if you floof it. If you don't floof it, it'll look a little bit dead and flat. Now I'm going to dovetail my tails. This looks lovely with all different types of gingham or florals. I do like to put a plane in between two patterns. Personal choice, but I just think it looks so much nicer when you've got patterned, plain patterned. Otherwise, it can be a bit overwhelming unless they really go together well. Cut yourself off a piece of ribbon. I put a run of glue down there and fold it. You can't really see this, can you? A run of glue down there and fold it. Then a run of glue down the other side and fold that on the top. Like that. So you're getting a thinner piece of ribbon. And now I'm going to put this in through over the pipe cleaner like that and then hot glue the back. If you've got some ends that you want to keep out, make sure they go either side of this. And then you can trim your edges then when you know exactly how much you need. So I glue one piece into place. And then holding that very firmly because you don't want to pull it off. Get a bit of tension on this and glue the other piece on the top. The other piece, the other piece. Oh, you can tell I'm concentrated. And then snip that to length. And if you want to, you can use a contrasting bow. You can use the colour from the very last bow. And then what you'll find is if you're attaching this to something, you'll be working on it and think, oh no, what have I done to my bow? I've ruined my bow. No, you haven't. Don't panic. Floof it up again. Remember, the most important part is to keep floofing and floofing whenever you need to. And this is why I don't take too much care early on, because you know you're probably going to squash the loops at some point and then need to refloof later. So there we got another bow. I hope you're feeling confident. We've got more bows to come and I know you're going to be able to make all of them. You can make a bow like this after watching my tutorial for, I don't know how long has this been running for, 15 minutes, something like that. 
could even be less. Let's move on to the next one. So now I'm going to make a five loop bow. For this, I've got myself this burlap ribbon. It's got a nice firm wire in because some of the wires are not as firm as others. And this I have used before and there are some joins and bits of glue. So don't panic, yours won't have that when you buy it from the shop. Hopefully, although I will show you, this is straight off the roll and look at that, there's a join in it. So if it really does concern you, you don't want any problems with your bows, open up your roll first and check all your ribbon before you start. Right, so we want a bit of a tail for this one. I think a tail, ooh, a nice long one about there. What's that? About 16 inches. And then I'm going to make a little loop. That is, ooh, about two inches. And then squash it up like that and pinch it. Now this ribbon is two-sided, so you don't really need to twist it. But I'm going to twist it just to show you how easy it is and that if you always twist every ribbon, you'll never get it wrong. And that way you would keep the good side on the outside. You wouldn't want the bad side on the outside, if you see what I mean. So now we're going to make a bigger loop. And I'm going to go for about this size, which if I measure it, it's about four inches up and down. So about eight inches in total length. Make your loop. Come back to the middle. Pinch it up nicely. Make your loop. Come back to the middle. Pinch it up nicely. And, and then hold it at the join that you're making. And give it a twist, don't forget. And then the same size there. And then gather it up. And then pinch it. Hold it. And now I can already see that one's too big, so it's not a problem. Just let it go, shrink it down a bit, pinch it up, hold it in place, twist it. And don't be frightened to twist your ribbon. You can be really vicious with this ribbon if necessary. And then another loop. Wreathe it up, give it a twist. And every time these have to be going from one side to the other. Now I'm going to change the name to this. You probably noticed on the card that it says a six loop bow. That's because I don't usually count that as one of my loops. So coming back and put my next loop on, pinch it in, put it in to my pinch, give it a twist and then cut it off. So now you've got all your important magudgeons going on there. Get yourself a pipe cleaner. And now this is a tricky bit. You want to put your pipe cleaner through the little loop. You see the little loop that we made on the top, the shorter one? Poke your pipe cleaner through there. And then bring it around the bow to the back. And don't panic. If you accidentally let go at this point, which I have done on several occasions, you just make it again. It's good practice. The more you make bows, the better you get at it. When I first made bows, they were a disaster. So again, before you fully tighten it, just check that you're happy with the length of your loops and just wiggle them and jiggle them and pull them and tug them until they're all roughly the same size. And then ignoring that big blob of glue that has come right to the top there, give them a bit of a twist, then you can get them to face the direction you want to. And then your shorter one, you can see if this was a full size loop, would just turn into another loop, whereas now it's the centre of the bow. And you can see this has taken me quite a while. I've been making bows for about two years now, so don't worry if it's your first bow or even your tenth bow or the first year of bow making, you will get better. Plus, when you settle down and spend a lot of time, it's amazing how wonderful you can get these bows to look. I'm going to leave the tails on these because if you stay to the end, I'm going to be showing you a bit more detail about tails for bows. But now I'm going to give you a little bit of a bonus. I'm going to use this ribbon. Always keep an eye out in thrift stores, charity shops, on eBay for rolls of ribbon because this is so expensive to buy. And if you shop around, you can find some real bargains. So I want to get myself tails even longer than the tails I've got on this bow. Plenty there. And then I'm going to do a similar sort of thing, but I'm not going to make that centre little loop that we've got here because we've already got something that covers the pipe cleaner. So I want to make loops, again, a bit bigger than the loops on this layer. So let's get a nice size loop there. 
I'm not going to go just bigger. I'm going to go a fair bit bigger. I think there. So make myself a loop. Scrunch it up. One tip. Always put your ribbon on the floor. It doesn't sound very glamorous. But otherwise you just coils and coils and you end up in a knot. And then make another loop. And yeah, I bet you already know what I'm going to be doing. Because you're learning so well. You're really understanding everything I'm doing. So well done on you. Another loop and scrunch it up. I can't wait to hear how you get on making these bows. Let me know. I really am excited to think that it just, you're going to have access to all these ideas for a bow in one video. And I'm going to do a fifth loop there. Scrunch it up, pop it in place and give it a twist. Out with a pipe cleaner. You know me in bargains. I do love a bargain. So I always recommend that you keep an eye out for just about anything in thrift stores. I got these pipe cleaners, lots of different ones. Not the nicest of colours, some, but most will be hidden. So now floof out your loops. One of the most important parts of bow making. So now squash it a bit. Don't panic. We're going to be sorting that out soon. Give it a tighten. And then put this bow over the top of this bow. Making sure my tails are where I want them to be. Fix it loosely at the back. Now pull my loops into place so I know I like the positioning. Don't forget, give them a good twist if they need it. And for this one, because it's a bigger bow and you don't need to do this, I'm just going to double up on the pipe cleaners like that, rather than cut them off. I don't always do this, but sometimes if I've got enough pipe cleaner left sticking out, I'll do that. Just makes them a little bit more firm. I didn't have a full double there, so I'll fold the top it over and give that a bit of a twist as well. There, there you go. <laughs> they don't look any really pretty, but you won't see them when they're attached to your craft or whatever it is you're making. So now I've got this bow and it needs floofing. Doesn't that need floofing? So always floof your back first and then floof your front. And don't see this as time consuming, see this as fun, because it really is, it's what makes the transformation on your bow. And the fun doesn't stop there, because you can, if you want to, then add another big bow on the back of that again, making your loops even bigger. And if you've got a wider ribbon, then all the better. Let's see, I've got some ribbon here. My desk is covered in ribbons. I'll just do a little example for you. I'll make some loops like that. This obviously isn't going to be a finished product. And then you can put it behind that bow. It gives you even more dimension again. I would tend to go for, if you go darker at the front, I'd go for darker at the back too, though. So that's another bow that I'm not going to be doing my tails on. Don't forget, stay till the end of the video because we've got some tails information coming up that you'll find really interesting. The next bow I'm going to make is a scrappy bow. And for that, I've got all these scraps. My granddaughter has been making dresses and outfits. And she gave me all her scrappy bits she didn't want. And I thought, oh, I know what to do with those. So they're quite thin. Some of them are a bit jaggedy, but that doesn't matter. Some of them are thicker than others. So if you've got one you think is a bit too thick, you just take your scissors to it, chop it right the way along the length, as straight as you can manage or as straight as you want to. Don't worry about that. Now, when you're making a scrappy bow, you can also use other bits and pieces. I got this gingham ribbon here. I got these bits of lace. And you can add just about anything. If you're making one that you want to look really countryfied, you can even use bits of twine in it too. Now, I'm going to add some black and white gingham to this too, because I think black and white gingham really highlights the lilacs and whites in this. And this, as you can see, isn't perfectly white. You can use a bit of anything. Oh, look, I've got more glitter everywhere. My whole house is full of glitter. So your scrappy bow is going to be half the length of all the scraps you've got. But your scraps don't have to be the same size. So you can decide how big you want your scrappy bow to be. I'd like my scrappy bow to be completely about that long. So I've got this piece snipped. And I'm going to put it there. And that's going to be the longest I want my pieces. I don't want pieces any longer than that. But this is going to be quite a grand scrappy bow. You can make small ones. You can make middle-sized ones. You could make enormous ones, I suppose. 
And now just take all your bits and pieces and start crisscrossing them over and over, making sure that the sizes are roughly right, no longer than your largest one that you want. And I like to put two of each. So I'm going to put two of those, unless you've only got one, in which case one will do. And keep doing that until you've got a pile of scrappy bits. And then last of all, I'm going to take this longer piece of lace and I'm going to use these as tails. So find out where the centre mark is, pop it like that. And then take myself a little strip of fabric, pinch in at the middle and tie it up. And don't worry if this isn't completely central because you can trim it or not, depending on what you want to do. So there you've got a scrappy bow. Now, these are rather long, so I'm going to cut them off about there because I don't want them too long. Chop that one down because he's a bit too long. And that can be a scrappy bow, but if you want to, there's something else you can do. So I'm going to show you the next stage. Get more pieces, but this time you're going to make a much smaller bow. So now you know what to do. So we'll jump straight over to what this looks like when I tied it up. So I've got this and I'm going to take this and tie it to the big long scrappy bow and this makes the scrappy bow into the tails of the little scrappy bow. So now it's up to you how much you want to trim this, how much you don't want to trim it. I love them the scrappier the better. I think if you're going to go for a scrappy bow you might as well go all in and end up with something that looks really scrappy like this. I just love that. Now, these are great French shabby chic. You could put these on the side of a picture frame and they would look amazing. You can put them on your Christmas tree. You can make lots of scrappy bows and hang them all over your Christmas tree. And that looks absolutely stunning, especially if you add little bits of tinsel or something sparkly in as well. Fortunately, I've got these little sparkly bits of fabric. So that one was very easy, wasn't it? Very much fun. And you can use scraps of anything, tear up old clothing, whatever you fancy. Just make it look the way you want it to. Very scrappy, semi-scrappy or extremely scrappy. Look at me, I fiddle around with them all the time. I'm never happy. I'm always wiggling and fiddling around with them until they're in place. Right, let's find out what other sort of bows we can make. For this next bow, I'm going to use three different types of ribbon. This is wired ribbon. It's two and a half inches wide. I've got these bees yellow and white stripes and I'm going to put some black and white gingham. So the first thing you want to do is cut yourself some 20 inch long pieces of ribbon. I find it's easier to measure my first one, cut it to size and then you can measure the others against this one piece of ribbon. Again drop your ribbon onto the floor otherwise it just coils and coils and gets very frustrating. And I'm going to fold these in half so I've got a selection of three different types of ribbon, but they all coordinate. I mean, you could go for obscenely uncoordinated if you wanted to. It's completely up to you. And you can do this in pinks, reds, greens, browns, neutrals. So now I leave about four inches and pinch. And then hold this. Now you are going to end up with all these in your hands. So be aware of that. Make sure you've got your pipe cleaner ready. Very important. You don't want to have them all in your hand and then think, ah, where's my pipe cleaner? So on to the next colour, four inches, scrunch, and you don't need to measure each one because once you've got a few on, you can't get it wrong. And we sort of go in round in a circle, almost like a hand-tied bunch of flowers, if you've ever made yourself a hand-tied bunch of flowers. Oh, I think they look lovely, hand-tied flowers. I love going down the garden, picking some flowers and then hand-tying them. Always looks so nice. So then you keep coming around in your order. If you don't, you can end up with too many of one colour all clumped together. Scrunch and then pinch. And now you can see we've been right the way around. We're going to have to come a little bit to the outside. Scrunch and pinch. And now oh, it's difficult. You need to turn it all around in your hand if you can. So this is fiddly, but it's not difficult to understand. You, I'm sure, can make one of these. I think you'll have no problems at all other than the trying to hold them. And that all just takes practice. I find the more you practice with this sort of thing, the better you get. 
And when you've done that, get your pipe cleaner and be careful not to let go until you've got your pipe cleaner in place. Put it into place and then twist it. And this is going to take some twisting. If you've got a flimsy pipe cleaner, one of the really thin ones, it could snap. So be aware of that. Really, a cable tie is better for this. And then it's just one yank and you're in place. With It takes a lot of twisting with a pipe cleaner. So then you've got this and you think, well, that's not very exciting, is it? We're not finished yet. First thing I'm going to do is dovetail all my tails. And it's at this point you realise just how many tails you have to dovetail. It takes quite a while. But it's good practice. And when all your ends are dovetailed, clean up your bits, but be careful because all these have got little tiny bits of metal in which will stick in your fingers and hurt. Now that's a mess, isn't it? So we need to work on this. First thing we're going to do is twist all our tails until they're in a position we like. Just facing the right way and not absolutely perfect. Again, you're going to have to move this, put it where you want it to go, but just to get things roughly where you want them and roughly facing the direction you like. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe because I've got lots more tutorials and crafts coming up and you don't want to miss any of them. Right, so when we've done all our tails roughly, again, not perfectly, try to resist the urge to fiddle, like I, I can tell resisting the urge to fiddle, and then start floofing out your loops. And now this starts to come to life. And there you've got, that is a lovely bow. Now you can do a few things with this. You can leave your tails on of your pipe cleaners to attach it to something there. One thing I like doing, and it sounds a bit crazy, but if you get a dowel or something like that and pop it up in there, I haven't got one to hand. I should have got one, really. I'll put my ruler up and you can make yourself a lovely flower to go in a vase. Sounds a bit crazy, but if you've got a big vase and two or three of these, they just look fabulous. So don't forget, it's not going to be perfect. Wait until it's in its final place and then you can really spend some time getting these loops looking absolutely out of this world. But there's more bows to come. We've got more work to do. Don't forget in the description you will see a timestamp that if you click on it, it'll take you to the particular bow that you want to make so that you can keep coming back and checking out if you forget how to make them or you just need a little bit more information as to how to do it. Now I'm going to make a smart bow. And it is exactly as the name implies, it's a very smart looking bow. I'm going to use a pipe cleaner for this. You can wire it if you want to. So decide on how big you want your bow to be. I'm using two and a half inch ribbon. Make yourself a bow shape on the desk in front of you, or the table. So I'm going to want tails fairly long and then come over a little bit longer in a crisscross pattern and you can make these any size you want within reason it all depends on how stiff the wire is in your ribbon things like that so i'm going to go for about that size and i'm going to cut off my excess then scrunch the bow in the middle make sure it is the middle check Yep, that's the middle. And put a pipe cleaner around. Or your wire or whatever it is you're using. Open your pipe cleaner out like that if you're going to be using your pipe cleaner to attach it to something else. And also <laughs> try to do it a bit more evenly than I've done. Cut yourself off a piece of matching ribbon. Fold both ends into the centre like that. And then glue those into place. I'm not gluing them into place because my glue gun's gone cool. I forgot I've turned it off. So it's warming up now while I carry on. Put your centre bit or your loopy bit on the desk. Put your bow on top of it. Then make sure your pipe cleaners are out either side. Then out with your hot glue. Glue the top into place. And I'm not going to be pulling this tight like I did on one of the other bows. So... I haven't got to be too fussy about letting the glue completely dry. Cut it to size. And then glue that into place. Now, if you're using a glittery ribbon like me, put some glue below the glitter as well. Because glitter doesn't tend to want to stick to glitter. Floof up your loops. 
Check you like the look of it. Yes. And now I'm going to just dovetail the ends. And look at that for a smart bow that you can attach to anything using your pipe cleaner on the back. Or you can snip the pipe cleaner short and glue this into place on something. So let's get on with the next bow. And for this next bow, I don't know if it fits into a category of a particular bow all on its own, but I'm going to use some of this deco mesh and it's in like a glittery red. And this will make an absolutely stunning bow. Each side of the bow I'm going to have a foot wide and then come down another two feet. Scrunch this up in the middle. Oop, take my scissors off there. Tie it in with a pipe cleaner. Now I'm going to cut three feet of deco mesh. This is a two and a half inch wide glittery one with the edging on. Fold it in half and put it on the front of the bow there. And I'm going to bring the pipe clean around once more and fix it. And that has put a pair of tails on top of the bow. And now I've got this little bit left. It did take, I will warn you, this took virtually a whole roll, but it's well worth it when you see the finished product. So this is going to be going in the middle there. Turn over your bow. And then the same principle as we did with the other bows. Make sure your pipe cleaners go side to side. Again, a bit more evenly than mine is. Hot glue. Pop that on, watch your fingers because it comes straight through deco mesh. And you don't want this tight at all. You want it to be lovely and floofy. I do recommend plenty of glue because... Again, glitter on glitter is never happy to stick. Because my scissors is non-stick. I know, I thought, why would I want a non-stick scissors? It's great for pinning down very large areas of hot glue without using your fingers. And now your deco mesh will stay floof because it's quite firm. So now you've got the option. You can put a decoration on here. You can put a little bow on top again. I think it spoils the look. I like these to look quite classic. But I do like the extra addition of these tails that dangle down in amongst the deco mesh at the bottom. So now all we need to do is to even them up. I'm going to make them slightly shorter than the tails of the big bow. And then they should curl a little bit so that they stand out even more. So this is difficult to show you. But it is absolutely fabulous. I can only show you half at a time. But look at that. That is really spectacular. You could put this on top of a tree and use it as a tree topper. You can put it on your door. You can put it on a chair back. You can hang it on the wall. You can do lots of things with this. If you've got somebody a very big gift for Christmas, you can put it on the gift and imagine the impact that's going to make. For this last boy, I wanted to show you something that really is effective for your floppy ribbon to make a very professional looking country style bow. So easy, anybody can make this. So I just wanted to end with a nice simple but not boring bow. So this is double sided again. It doesn't matter which way it's facing, so you'll be fine with this. But if you've got ribbon that does face in one direction, make sure you've got all the good sides facing out. Make yourself a bow shape. Now because this is a two inch and then I'm going to use this one inch, I don't want too big a bow. So I think about like that, which, in case you're wondering, is about four inches wide. Chop my tails off. Scrunch it up. And this time I'm going to use some twine. So if you haven't got pipe cleaners, all is not lost, use your twine. I find the quickest way to use twine on this sort of bow, because you don't want it to come undone, is to fold it in half, make a loop, put the loop behind the bow, Put the tail bit through that loop and then you can pull it tight rather than have to tie it. Then I'm going to take this inch wide burlap. Again, you don't need to worry about any particular side. It's a floppy ribbon, but that's not going to be a problem at all. Make your bow shape slightly smaller. So mine is about three inches across. I'm going to cut my tails off. Then I'm going to scrunch it. And with this... Here, I'm going to bring one piece of twine to the bottom, one to the top, bring it around the front and tie it into place while holding the whole thing together. This is fiddly. <laughs> I 
I could say, no, it's not fiddly, but it is. Especially when you've left your scissors underneath your arm and it keeps clattering. Shush, move over there. That's better. And then I tie two knots on the back. And now you've got this string to attach it to anything you wanted to. And it's not at the front because it doesn't work at the front. Now that looks okay, but it needs a little something. Now I'm going to get my one inch gingham. Make sure I got some nice tail length and chop it off. And then this I'm going to put on the front, but I'm not going to tie this on because I wanted to hide all the tie in. So a little bit of hot glue. You don't need much. Pop it into place and watch you don't burn your fingers. And now I'm levelling up my tails, but I'm not going to dovetail the burlap because I like the sort of casual look of the burlap. And I think it doesn't suit dovetails as well as the others. And I love the contrast. So now we've got our tie around the back for attaching it. And there are three layers of that bow. And I just think that looks stunning. It's so pretty, so country and so professional looking. If you were to buy a bow like that in a shop, well, I got somewhere... I got this bag of bows. These were three for a pound. I didn't pay that. I paid 10p in the sale. And that's all that is, is the bow shape I showed you with some wire holding it. So they work out 33p each. Can you imagine how much a bow like this would cost with three separate layers on, with all that interest, a really nice attachment? You're looking at a couple of pounds. And you just made it for pennies because it doesn't take a lot of ribbon. You can make it the size you've got. If you've only got smaller lengths of ribbon, just make a smaller bow. Right now we've got to the exciting part. It's time for some interesting tail talk. Now, what are you going to do with your tails? They're okay, but they're a bit tatty looking. What can you do with these? Well, I'm going to show you some tips to make your tails look absolutely superb, just as superb as your loops. So there are a few different options you've got. Now, first thing I'm going to show you before we do anything else with these tails is how to do a dovetail. If you've got yourself a piece of ribbon, I'll use this bit here, and you're trying to cut a dovetail. So you think, right, it's got to go up on there, and then up on there. And No, that's not right. So then you go there, and then there. Uh, no, that's not right, and it doesn't cut right. Oh, I don't know how you make dovetails. It's really easy. Let me show you the secret the bow makers have. Take the end of your ribbon, fold it in half, and you want to put your wire away from your scissors, and then cut up to your wire. And there you've got yourself two perfectly even points on your dovetail. I always learn to put the wires this side away from your scissors and snip up because sometimes you get it wrong, you snip the wrong way and oh, you haven't got a dovetail, you've got like that, a point. <laughs> so that's why. So let's do it on this one. And the way to make sure they're roughly the same length is hold them here and then mark with your finger or with your memory where the bottom of the dovetail comes. Fold it in half. Then you want to put your wired end away from your scissors. Cut up to your wire. And another perfect dovetail. Fold your ribbon, wire away from the scissors, cut up to the wire. Don't forget, if you need to refresh your memory when you're doing this thing, I'll have a timestamp in the description saying cutting dovetails. So, or easy way to cut dovetails, or easy way to cut perfect dovetails. <laughs> That's even better because it is the best way to do it. So now you've got your long dangly bits, what are you going to do with them? Well, there's a couple of options. So if you get your tails and then you fold them up, and I would advise you to do both of them at the same time, next door to each other, turn them up, and then an inch later, turn them down again. An inch itch, it hasn't got to be exactly an inch. And then up and down. And once you've measured the one turn, you can just do one side, then the other, like that. And then the same with this side, down, up, down, up, down, like that. And now gently open them out and look at that. Isn't that pretty? And if it doesn't work right, don't worry. Just flatten them out and then start again. But I've got these long ones. What am I going to do with these? Start at the top, put your fingers in the ribbon like this and then coil them around. 
Now, this one isn't very good because it hasn't got the strongest wire in, but it'll do. And then do the same on this side. Put your fingers in and then roll it around. I wouldn't recommend you do your bottom tails, then your top tails. Because <laughs> I'm squashing and mangling my top tails. Like that. And then pull them down gently. Like that. Make sure they're round. Pull them down. As much as you want to. And now look. You have folded tails with curly bits on the bottom. Or you can do all curls or all folds per bow. But I just wanted to show you two methods on this bow of how to make your tails look a little bit more interesting. Is there anything else you can do? I'll show you now. So here's a bow I just really whipped up quickly just to show you a few more dovetail ends. This is a little bit out there. <laughs> you may like this, you may not. Oh, as you can see, that join and that piece of ribbon came right where I didn't want it to be. Remember I showed it you right back at the beginning of the video and said, check your ribbon before you make a bow. <laughs> right then, so we're going to make long dovetails. Now, these are really weird. Fold your ribbon in half and put your metal end away from your scissors and cut down towards your scissors, but take forever to do it. Go the long way around. Like that. Like that. And then one thing I like to do when I've done this, it's not the sort of thing you want to do all the time. You may want to do it occasionally and you can give your little tails or your large tails a curl like that. And I think they almost look like jesters for some That's what I see when I look at these. I think they're lovely like that. So there's something else you can do with your dovetails and your tails. But there's another idea as well to make your bows look extra special, much more professional and so easy. So I've got this ribbon, it's wired, and it's about two inches wide. So I'm going to make myself another set of tails. I want these to be a little bit shorter than the other tails, so about there. Chop it off. I'm going to cut this ribbon in half. The same height on both pieces. And then I'm going to get a bell. Thread this ribbon through the bell. Tie a knot. And then I like to put a little blob of hot glue in there just to keep the bell firmly tied. And then do the same on the other side. I'm just going to even them out a little bit so they almost look like mini bows. You've also got the option to cut those right off and put, this isn't quite big enough, but you could put a little bow on the top there to hide the knot if you wanted to as well. There are so many different alternatives you can do with these sort of things. Now you can either put your pipe cleaner through to attach it, which is what I'm going to do, or you can glue it into place. It's up to you. And now look at that. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy and I love it. I'm not happy with these ends, so I'm going to do a proper dovetail. Wire away from the scissors, cut up to the wire. Oh yes, I think that's much better. So look at that. <laughs> that is a crazy, wacky looking bow. But you can add these little touches to any bow you make. And I am a particular fan of putting bells on the end of these bows. But you can also put Christmas baubles on if you want to. I just think they're very, very cute. So that's 10 ideas on how to make a professional looking bow. High end looking bow really easily. And I'm sure you can do it. Even if you get it wrong a few times, you're going to get there to the end. I know you're going to. So don't forget, keep coming back. Check out the timestamp if you need to go to a particular bow. If you get stuck, watch again. And before you know it, you won't need to watch. You'll just naturally be doing the right thing down to making your dovetails, making your bows, whether they're country, shabby, chic, glamorous, Christmas, spring, autumn, you name it. With the right ribbon and a little bit of imagination, you can make a bow for any season, any time of year, and it will look fabulous. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and really don't forget to subscribe be other you're going to miss out. I've got so many videos coming up and I wouldn't want you to miss any of them. So I'll see you all next time. But until then, don't forget, happy crafting and have fun. Bye.